That sounds like the charge into battle. <laughs> oh, praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Come ahead, guys. Uh, I just love I was sitting here this morning just for a few minutes before service and just listening to all the chatter and the laughter and the, the visiting that everybody's doing. And isn't it great to come together? Praise the Lord. And these, in these days, we can still come together and, and praise the Lord together. So uh, God is good and he's merciful. Let's uh, stand, if you can, for worship this morning, and let's uh, join our hearts and our voices and, and worship him together. Ian's going to lead us this morning.
The struggle you're facing is slowly replacing your hope with despair. All the process is long, and you're losing your song in the night. You can be sure that the Lord has his hand on you, safe and secure. He will never abandon you. You are his treasure, and he finds his pleasure in you. Ooh. He who began a good work in you. He who began a good work in you. Think about his love, think about his goodness, think about his grace that's brought us through. For as high as the heavens above, so great is the legend. about his love, think about his goodness, think about his grace that's brought us through, for us high as the heavens above, so great.
never saw me out. This love has sought me out and found me and found me. He satisfied. He satisfies. He satisfies. He satisfies my desire.
Go ahead and praise him. Praise and glory shall not fail throughout eternity. As long as we have breath, we will praise the Lord. Right? Right. We don't want the rocks to have to cry out. We will praise him and exalt his name. Praise the Lord together. Hallelujah. Just a couple of announcements. Uh, today, following the service, we're having uh, lunch downstairs. Everyone is, is welcome to join with us. And we will just need some men to go down ahead and set up the tables and chairs so they're ready for everyone. And uh, we'll help need some help in the kitchen. The ladies can help us there. Uh, tonight is Growing Disciples at 6.30 p.m. And uh, we invite those that are participating. We're just a couple more weeks, and then we'll be uh, closing that down for the summer in, in the way we've been doing it. Today is our Missions uh, Offering Sunday. And please designate that on your, on your on offering envelopes. And we have a special uh, announcement. And uh, uh, Wilma, if you would put the slide, the single slide that I've got there of the missionaries. Many years ago, uh, this couple, Bob and Nancy Wright, pastored here at Bethel. And we have been supporting their son, Stephen, in a restricted country for many years now. And uh, now we have an opportunity to, to provide for them and to support them. And uh, so they are working in a predominantly Muslim context with an incredible opportunity to share Christ and live out the gospel among 650 students from over 25 countries. Uh, Nancy is a nurse, and um, uh, Bob is a teacher in a, in a school there, and so they're going to be um, ministering to young people, and they're so excited about that. Now, they've been there since uh, June last year, and so we're just, for two 2022, we're going to help support them. So their prayer, they want us to pray for effective communication of the gospel as we disciple young leaders. Um, and the school has reopened for in-person engagement, uh, for wisdom and spiritual guidance as we seek to reach out to staff and students in love and truth, and for grace and safety as they travel. And they are in uh, a Southeast Asia, Malaysia area, and we can't give you the exact location. But if you would like to communicate with them directly, we do have a, an email that we can give you. And you can get updates from them every month. And uh, so we're excited about being able to support former pastors who were here in our congregation. So um, please keep them in your prayers, and we'll, we'll provide updates. They do send out a, a monthly uh, or bi-monthly letter uh, of communication with testimonies and uh, and uh, great stories about what God is doing there. So praise the Lord. We get to continue to support them. And remember that your offering 
uh, you need to designate that on your offering envelope for missions. So praise the Lord. Pastor Ron's going to come now and minister the word. Hallelujah. Oh, before you do that, can, can we sing a special happy birthday? There, there's a young fella here today that's having a birthday. Johnny. Johnny. Johnny, stand up, Johnny, so everybody can see you. We're going to sing happy birthday. How's that? Okay. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, God bless. Happy birthday to you. I just had to do that. We love you, Johnny. Bless you. <laughs> Hallelujah. Well, it's okay to let the Lord hear your praise. I can see you're all excited about that. <laughs> Glory to God. I am going to ask you to stand just for a moment. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. What I'd like you to do is give the Lord the loudest praise you possibly can, whether that's uh, clapping your hands, whether that's whistling, whether that's a shout of victory. <laughs> but glory to God. Thank you, Lord. Praise your name, Lord. Praise your name, Lord. Praise your name. Praise you, Lord. Praise you, Lord. Praise you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Glory to Jesus. Praise you, Lord. We give you thanks, Lord. We give you thanks, Lord. Glory to Jesus. Father, I thank you for your presence in this place. I thank you, Lord, for your presence in the room of those that are watching online. Lord, I give you praise. I thank you for our brother Bob and Nancy. I ask that your power of the Holy Spirit would flow through them in a mighty way in Jesus' name and that they will see results like they've never seen in any time of their lives. I thank you, Lord, for your provision and your protection upon them in Jesus' mighty name. And we thank you, Lord, you have given us opportunity to support them. But even, Lord, I thank you for the opportunity that we can pray for them and intercede for them in Jesus name I ask that the angels of the Lord would encamp around about them in Jesus name and that Lord you will draw close to them that even in the midst of, of uh, stuff that's going on in their in their countries I also pray for their stun, son, son Stephen I ask Lord that as he translates Bibles in other languages I thank you for your wisdom upon him I thank you for your power upon him and that Lord Lord, you will strengthen him in the name of Jesus. Care for them as only you can. Be their shepherd so they shall not want. In Jesus' name we pray. Now, Lord, as we look into your word, we thank you for it. We, we're glad, Lord, that you are the same yesterday, today, and forever. You never change. Lord, we delight to look into your word today. So, Lord, open our eyes. Open our ears. Soften our hearts that we will respond bond accordingly in Jesus name we give you praise now and everyone said Amen. Ooh, glory to God I have to tell you uh, we we have a personal connection with Nancy uh, years ago we uh, got to know her brother when I was in Bible school we uh, went to school with her brother. In fact, he was one of my roommates in uh, one of my years. And uh, he has since gone to be with the Lord. He was ministering in uh, Hong Kong. And, uh, well, he went to be with Jesus a number of years ago. And uh, he was a, a funny fella. I tell you, he could sketch, my gracious, I had to do a recording, and I needed a recording or a cover for my recording, and Jim, he was a, well, he was a professional cartoonist, he used to do cartoons for the, for the newspaper, 
down in uh, toward Windsor, on Ontario. And uh, my gracious, he could, he could do things on that canvas that was whoo. But uh, that's how we got to know uh, Nancy. And uh, we uh, do ask that you would continue to pray for Nancy and Bob. And uh, well, it's a delight to be in the presence of God. I'll tell you, in his presence, there's fullness of joy. <laughs> Glory. I have to tell you, it's a privilege and an honor to be in his presence. Sometimes we're busy. We want to, uh, we want to invite him into our space. I have to tell you, he invites us into his space. We enter his gates with thanksgiving. How did I say? Why did I say it like that? But we enter his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise. And there ought to be something bubbling inside of us that just can't stop but praise him. I, uh, a few weeks ago, we started a series, God Is. And uh, we, found, we found out that God is just, he's merciful. Well, glory to God. I know I've talked about some of the things I'm going to talk about today, but I just found God to be trustworthy. I I'm sure we could take some time to if we were to take some time to, to uh, get some testimonies, you would be able to tell me just how trustworthy God is. But he's so trustworthy that I think that we can live our lives without worry. He said, well, Pastor, that, that, that's, that's, well, what, what is it that keeps you awake at night? What is your biggest worry? My wife and I, we've uh, done some wilderness camping. And uh, every now and again, I mean, there's, we haven't, we never cro come across any bear. We never crossed any, any coyote, although I think I've heard a few. I've, uh, we haven't encountered any moose or deer up where we were camping. But there is wildlife up there. But there are times you got to get up at night. And you got to leave the tent. You know what I mean. And, and, and to make you feel more comfortable, just so that you can get back to sleep. But you're, you know, I don't know about Shannon. I, I, would I get outside that tent and I, I'm looking around. Well, you, well, you would too. You know, it's, it's wilderness. And every now and again, you hear some noises. You know, what's that? But, uh, you know, we never had any, any problems. We never had any wildlife. We didn't have any of that. But uh, I, I, enjoyed, I enjoyed the nighttime fires that we had because I knew that as long as the fires were burning, the animals wouldn't come near. The animals wouldn't come near our nighttime burning. And I have to tell you, that one of the uh, illustrations or symbols of the Holy Spirit is uh, fire. And I got to tell you, when you're in those scary moments, you need to have the fire of the Holy Spirit. Now, in June 22, 3, 4, 5, and 6, 2, we have two guests that are going to come Brother Kevin Johnson, our district superintendent, is going to come, and also Ralph Pupar, who, we, all, who, we, who we've already had here a few weeks ago. They're going to come, and we're going to do special meetings on those days, and we're calling it Encounter with Holy Spirit. And uh, you say, well, Pastor, we've never done anything like this. I realize that. But in coming days, we're going to need to have an encounter with the Holy Spirit because of the days that were coming. If we think the days are going to get better, 
the Bible says that the days will wax worse and worse, that gross darkness will cover the earth. Gross darkness. Now, what do you suppose is going to is going to uh, be a holdup with all the darkness that's coming. What do you suppose is going to be the holdup? It's going to be people that have the Holy Spirit that are moving and walking and uh, have a, uh, a relationship with Almighty God. And so uh, your nighttime fires can get fired up if you come to some of those meetings. Ooh, glory to God. How many know that you need to have to be refired. You've been fired once before. I'm not talking about fired from a job. I'm talking about being fired up with the Holy Spirit. Glory to God. He can give you give you insight and give you help in your life. That uh, boy, uh, well, you're going to need it. You know, we may hear the news. We may, we may hear of wars, and we may hear of unrest. The economy is uncertain. You may be as people are worried about aging parents or, or the next uh, apartment you, you need or keeping the children safe. Maybe it's finances, providing for family, paying bills for the month, or, or maybe it's college debt. You know, maybe it's, it's a job that's been lost and you need to find it. Somebody online, I'm telling you, 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 wanna, you have a sense you just want to make a difference, but you're worrying, how in the world can I make a difference because I failed so many times? Well, and you might say, well, you, you, you know, Pastor, I wasn't worried before, but that list is pretty extreme. I wasn't worried before. Well... You know, maybe it's the, the, the thing that the doctor's got to say, the next doctor's appointment. Maybe some people are thinking about, you know, their retirement. Am I going to be able to ever make a difference? Some of you are thinking, well, I've got so many worries. And like the old man said, I've had so many worries and very few of them have, have come to pass. And then, you know, some of us worry, can I get all my work done? Do I have time to get all my work done? But do you know what we worry about the most reveals where we trust God the least? Should I say that again? What we worry about the most reveals where we trust God the least. In Matthew chapter 6, verse 22, it says, your eye is a lamp that provides light for your body. When your eye is good, your whole body is filled with light. And when your eye is bad, your whole body is filled with darkness. And if the light you think you have is actually darkness, how deep is that darkness? No one can serve two masters. For you will hate one and love the other. You will be devoted to one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and money. And might I say it like this, you cannot serve God and keep your worry in context. Because the following verse, he says, that's why I tell you. You know, he just told them about the light that, that comes in or the darkness that comes in, but he says, that is why I tell you in context, you not to worry about everyday life, whether you have enough food and drink or enough clothes to wear. Isn't life more than food and your body more than clothing? Look at the birds. You don't plant or harvest or store food in your barns for your heavenly father feeds them. And aren't you more valuable? Now, I'll turn to the person next to you or at least look to somebody that may be across the aisle and you say, you're valuable. Go ahead, tell them. You're more valuable. Glory to God. You're valuable. You're valuable. We just don't realize just how much value we have to God. Whew. And aren't you more valuable to him than they are? 
Can all your worries add a single moment to your life? And why worry about your clothing? Look at the lilies of the field and how they grow. They don't work or make their clothing. And yet Solomon, in all his glory, was not dressed as beautiful as they are, as beautifully as they are. Now Solomon was a king. He had it all. He was the wisest man. The Bible says he was the wisest man that ever lived up to that time anyway. And I, th I think that it's, uh, it's awesome that God cares so wonderfully for the wildflowers. So, you know, the wildflowers are here today and can be thrown into the fire tomorrow. But he certainly still cares for them. And you can go be going through the fire, you can be going through darkness, and God still cares for you. Why do you have so little faith? That's what he said. Jesus said that. Why do you have so little faith? So don't worry about these things, saying, what should, will we eat? What will we drink? What will we wear? These things dominate the thoughts of unbelievers, but your heavenly Father already knows all your needs. Now, if I was sitting where you were, I'd be saying, thank you, Jesus. Because he already knows. Verse 33 says, seek the kingdom of God above all else and live righteously. And he will give you everything you need. Again, I would be saying, thank you, Lord. So don't worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will bring its own worries. Today's troubles is enough for today. Jesus said there in verse 25, do not worry about your life. In uh, 27, can any one of you by worrying add a single hour to your life? Does worry help you? Does worry help you live longer? No, it doesn't. We know the answer is no. So why don't we just stop worrying? That doesn't mean that we, know that we, that we don't need to, to gather and we don't need to plant. My wife's getting ready to plant her garden, and I'm sure you are too. Glory to God. But I know Jesus said, do not. What? Do not. Say that word with me. Do not. Do not worry about your life. Do not worry about tomorrow. Now, say this with me. God is trustworthy. Say it again. Corey Ten Boone said, Worrying doesn't empty tomorrow of its sorrow. It empties today of its strength. Whew. It's possible to live without worry. That doesn't mean that you don't have to give thoughts about some of the things you're going to be doing or that you don't plan but planning is different from worry. And I think that we uh, need to answer one of the most fundamental questions for all of humanity. And it's actually found in, in Genesis chapter 3 with Adam and Eve. In verse 1 it says, Now the serpent was more cunning than any animal of the field which the Lord had made. And he says to the woman, this is the serpent, has God really said, you shall not eat from any tree of the garden? In other words, what the serpent is saying is, is God trustworthy? When the woman saw that tree was good for food, at least in the looks, and it was a delight to the eyes, verse 6 says, and the tree was desirable to make one wise. She took some of its fruit and ate, and she gave, some of, she gave some to her husband with her, and he ate. The woman done it again. Well, actually, the guy has a mind of his own. Adam could have said no. He got direct direction from God. But woman, she had a choice to make, just like we have a choice to make. When we make 
uh, one of our 35,000 decisions a day. I'm going to trust God. Or I'm going to trust what I see. Am I going to trust God or am I going to trust what I can touch? Am I going to trust God or am I going to trust what I desire? Am I going to trust God or am I going to trust what I can control? Every single one of us have to answer the question, is God trustworthy? Well, let me tell you in Psalm 62, verse 7 and 8, it says, my victory, or some translations use the word salvation, my victory and honor come from God alone. He is my refuge, a rock where there is n where no enemy can reach me. Glory to God. You say, my, 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 pastor, that's a big one. Yes, it is. Do you trust God? Do you think he is trustworthy enough? He is my refuge, a rock where no enemy can reach me. Oh, my people, trust him Trust in him at all times, at all times. Pour out your heart to him, for God is your refuge. Let me assure you, based on the word of God, God is trustworthy. The psalmist says, my salvation and honor depend on whom? God. That means it doesn't depend on me. It depends on God. For the Lord my God is a mighty rock and a fortress. Now, does that sound like that, that this guy that wrote this, that he's somebody that's worried? Trust in him at all times. Not sometime or when you feel like it. Not just with your eternity. Not just with part of the things. It's what he said. Trust in him at all times, you people, pour out your hearts to him, your worries, your fears, pour them out to him. Why? Because he's your refuge. Whew. The psalmist understands the truth. He knows that God is trustworthy. God is trustworthy. And it's not, it's not just something that God does. It's something he is. He's deserving of our confidence. That's why we had you stand and give him praise. He deserves our confidence. Well, how do we know God is trustworthy, Pastor? Well, let me point out three things that will help encourage you. Are you ready for some encouragement? Well, first thing is God's been faithful before. In the, uh, Exodus chapter 13, verse 3, you know, Moses said to the people, Remember this day in which you departed from Egypt, from the house of slavery, for by a powerful hand the Lord brought you out of this place. The, uh, the Lord, he heard their cries. He delivered them out of bondage from Egypt. He delivered them from Pharaoh. Verse 10 says there, talks about the plagues, the Red Sea, uh, stopped the Egyptian army in their tracks. He led them through the wilderness, cloud by day, fire by night. When they were, uh, when they were thirsty, he provided water. When they were hungry, he provided food. And you know what he tells them to do? Uh, Moses used the word, remember this day. So how did they remember it? They, they built monuments. They piled up rocks at the site of some, some place significant. Jacob did the same thing when he encountered uh, God. Moses, when he uh, do, does the Ten Commandments. And what they're basically saying is, look, this is a monument to remember. It's a remembrance. God's done it before. He can do it again. That theme continues throughout the Old Testament. 
comes up from Genesis and Exodus and Deuteronomy and Psalms. It comes up in the Minor Prophets. And this theme is repeated time and time again. Remember, remember. So Moses says to the people, remember this day. Look back on this day. Do not forget this day on which you were, went through when you were departed from Egypt and brought out of the house of slavery. It's not my strength. It's not by your strength. But it's by the powerful hand that the Lord brought you out from this place. And Moses says, remember that. Remember that God's been faithful. Remember the fact that when you cried out for mercy, God heard your cry. Remember that when God delivered you from the most powerful ruler on the face of the earth by, by ten mir uh, uh, miraculous plagues, remember that. Remember the fact that when you got to the Red Sea, you, you were not stopped by, by the water, for God parted the waters. You crossed on dry ground, and God stopped the most powerful army military force on earth in their tracks. In fact, he drowned them. Glory to God. Remember that when you got into the wilderness, God led you uh, by day by, by day and a, uh, and a cloud by day and a fire by night. Remember, 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 remember. God has been faithful before. Remember that God is trustworthy because if he's done it before, he will do it again. The piles of stone. What are the piles of stone in your life that you can look back on? that reminds you of God's faithfulness. Maybe it's the day when he radically transformed your life, when you entered in a relationship with him. My first pastor and his wife both went to be with Jesus. They died two days apart during this past week. They were the most loving people I can remember. They were in our church for 11 years. And both of them passed away and are now in the presence of Jesus. And one of the things that was often talked about with Pastor uh, uh, Pinkston, Ruth, his wife, who was actually the daughter of J.H. Blair, who started uh, Brayside Pentecostal Camp and also started the uh, Pentecostal Bible School in Peterborough. Those people were a part of the marker in my life when I gave my life to Jesus at seven years old. That was a marker. For some, maybe the marker is seeing your child water baptized. But I know there's been times when the car's been broken down. But one of the markers for me when our car was broken down, God was faithful. I'll tell you, we were in the middle of nowhere, and I was just getting ready to uh, go for a little walk, and a policeman comes along. And he said, would you like me to call a tow truck? We were in Quebec, and uh, the alternator had gone in our car. And we got towed to a little place where they don't speak a whole lot of English, only one guy. And we were well looked after. And you know, God provided for us. I remember that. You know, one of the other markers for me is my wife's ring. When, uh, before we were married, I'd, I was traveling and I wasn't getting paid a whole lot of money. I was traveling with, a, with an evangelist. And uh, back in those days, most churches were doing good to give you $250 for two of you. Uh, you know, back in those, in those days for a per service that was. So I wasn't making a whole lot of money. And uh, my, my girlfriend at that time, Shannon, we went looking for rings. And I'm going, dear Lord, what in the world am I doing looking for a ring? I do not have savings. I've been through Bible school. At least I don't have debt. I, had a, my, uh, I did have a car. Uh, we used to call it Betsy. It was a big old brown boat. And the frame was got all rusted out and everything else. Anyway, we went looking for rings, and she found that one. She said she liked that one. Well, I went back. Now, my Shannon's got a little bit different take on the story, but that was a marker. I'll tell you why it was a marker. With not having any money, I went back to that guy and I said, you know, 
My girlfriend really likes that ring, but I don't really have a whole lot of money. Is there a way you can set that aside? And he said to me, I'll tell you what I'm going to do. You bring me $50, and I'll hold that ring. So I had to go scrounging for $50. I went to the office where Shannon was working at that time. She was working for two lawyers. And I said, would you have $50? <laughs> yeah, she was asking the question then, what do you need this for? <laughs> well, I'll tell you what. I borrowed that $50, and I went, and I put that $50 down on the desk. And that guy, and I uh, got a receipt, and now the fellow just said, well, you hold on now for a moment. And I'm thinking, oh, no. So he wrapped it, he wrapped it up, and he says, here, you take this ring, and you, and you bring whenever you're, you uh, can, you bring the money in. I said, sir, you don't understand. I, I work for an evangelist. I'm not making a whole lot of money. But I said, uh, I, I, am, I am good for it, but I said, uh, I, I, uh, I, I want to pay for it first. He says, no, I trust you. He gave me that ring. He gave me that ring, and God provided the money. We paid off that ring. It wasn't, wasn't that, that long ago, or that long a span. But that's a marker for me because God was trustworthy. God provided. I could tell you all kinds of different, different uh, personal monuments for me. Monument doesn't necessarily have to be something you build, but something you come back to. 1983, we were married. God is faithful today. God was faithful all these years. All the song says it like this. All my life, you have been faithful. All my life, you have been so, so good. And every day that I am able... Many of you have awesome stories. But God is faithful today. He said in Numbers chapter 14, verse 9, he says, Do not rebel against the Lord, and do not be afraid of the people of the land, because we will devour them. Joshua gets a word from God. And Joshua's word was, We will devour them. Their protection... That's protection of the enemy. The protection is gone. But the Lord is with us. Do not be afraid. God is trustworthy today, not because of the absence of problems, but because of the presence of God. Whew, that's good. It, 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 it led me, glory to God, that is so good. It's not because of the absence of problems, but it's because of the presence of God. That's why I'm telling you that it's good to be filled with the Spirit. That's why I suggest to people, find, a, a, find your relationship with God. Having a relationship with God is so important. God led the, the Israelites to the edge of the promised land. He had been faithful before. He was with them. But did they trust Him? Did they go in? No, no, they didn't trust him. You say, well, how do we know they didn't trust him? Because trust is not something we have. Trust is a verb. It's what we do. They didn't step inside the promised land. They weren't quite ready. This just blows me away. Because God said, I'm with you. When Moses actually was the one that first gave them that thought about, he's with us. You know, how many of you uh, were kids and you didn't like the dark? And I did. I was a kid that didn't like the dark. 
I, I tell you, uh, every now and again I would get up because I thought the place was on fire. Seriously. I'd seen houses burn and things burn and I was afraid of fire, but the, the nights, there'd be nights that I didn't really like the dark. I appreciated having a nightlight. And maybe you had a child. Maybe you had a child that uh, didn't like the dark. The child would get up. Mom, Dad, I'm hungry. Well, it wasn't because they were really hungry. It's because they were afraid of the dark. They get up, you know, just go back to bed. It'll be all right. And they get up again. Mom, Dad, I, I got to go pee. Well, you wouldn't pee before, but that's okay. You know, you can go back to bed. So they get up, they get up again, and uh, mom, dad, uh, I'm not tired. Well, if you go back to bed and just lie there for a few moments, you'll be okay. Well, you know, uh, they get up a few moments later, mom, dad, uh, you know, uh, can you come and be with me? And all of a sudden, there would be nothing that changes. They walk back into the room in the darkness. Nothing had changed. But mom or dad would come into the room, into that darkness. And everything was okay because their presence made it okay. When you're into the dark place and you're worried about it, you call upon the name of the Lord. He'll come and be with you. The darkness and stuff may still be there, but because of his presence, things changed. Hallelujah. I'm almost through. God will be faithful. God has been faithful in the past. He's faithful today. He'll be faithful tomorrow. So uh, the Lord said to Moses in Numbers chapter 13, send some men to explore the land of Canaan. Listen to this. Send some men to explore the land of Canaan, which I am giving you. God said to the Israelites, I'm giving you the land. What's the end of the story? They were looking about at the immediate circumstance. But when you look at the end of the story, God's saying, I'm going to be with you. I am giving you the land. Back in one portion of Scripture, he says, now, don't, you don't try and take over the whole thing, but nation, or nation by nation, kingdom by kingdom, city by city, little by little, because if you don't do it that way, the land's going to be destroyed. But the end of the story is, he's with you. Praise the Lord. So Joshua understood something. Joshua understood that our success is not dependent on what we see. Our success is not dependent on the size of the opposition. Our success is dependent upon the presence of God in our lives. Can you imagine? I can just uh, fast forward ahead in the Revelation chapter 21. I heard a loud voice in verse 3. This is what the, the uh, revelator saw. I heard a loud voice from the throne saying, Look, God's dwelling place is now among the people, and he will dwell with them. They will be his people, and God himself will, will be with them and be their God. He will wipe every tear from their eye. There will be no more death or mourning or crying or pain, for the older things are passed away. He who was seated on the throne said, I am making everything new. Now, if he said he's going to make everything new, he told John, he said, write it down. For these words are trustworthy and true. See, he was faithful before, he's faithful now, and he's still faithful in the end. He said, I will never leave you nor forsake you. He said in Isaiah 46, I am he, I am he who will sustain you. I have made you and I will carry you. I will sustain you and I will rescue you. Uh, 41, the 13, Isaiah. For I hold you in my right hand. I, the Lord, your God, I say to you, 
Don't be afraid. I'm here to help you. Glory to God. So, no wonder when he told his disciples, I will surely be with you in Matthew chapter 28, even until the very end of the age. He is with us. When we remember what he's done, when, when we experience what he does today, we look, can look forward to tomorrow. Praise God. Do you know, have you ever seen rock climbers? And those rock climbers, they, they get a hold and they're on cliffs and they're just hardly hanging on with their fingers. And you wonder, ooh, this doesn't look good. I'm glad it's that guy and not me. You see, well, you know, I, I would think that it's uh, those times that we, uh, when we're going through that kind of a thing in life, the Lord is with us. Nothing is necessarily changed about your situation, but everything changes when you put your hand in the hand of the one who is trustworthy. It's really not what keeps you up at night. It is who you were hanging on to, who is in your life. How can we hang on? Only through the strength of Almighty God. Pray with me. Heavenly Father, thank you that you are so much. Thank you so much that you are a God who is trustworthy. Thank you that you are one who has been faithful in the past. Thank you that you are faithful today because you are with us today. And thank you that you will be faithful in the future. Help us to put your word into practice. We are tired of controlling our lives. We desire to do it your way. And even when we feel like the rock climber on the top who's barely hanging on, thank you, Lord, for the good news that you are someone that we can hang on to you. We, we can hang on to. Thank you that for the good news that even while we were sinners, you sent Jesus to die on the cross for you. I want to hold on to Jesus, the only trust for, for the trustworthy one that can anchor my life. And now, Lord, whether you're sitting here in, a, in the pew or at home, you can say, now, Lord, I decide to follow Jesus. I decide to, to receive your grace. I desire to plus my, place my trust in you. I believe in my heart. I confess with my mouth. And I say yes to Jesus. I want to put my hope and my trust in you. I thank you, Lord, for this new life. I thank you that you are trustworthy. And it's in your the name of Jesus that I pray. Praise the Lord. He who began a good work in you, he who began a good work in you is able, he is trustworthy to carry you through in Jesus' name.
My friends, today, when you realize that God is, cares for you and he desires you to follow him, it really is well worth it to, come, to surrender your life to him. He is able to complete it. But you got to surrender to him. You got to surrender to him. Well, thank you for watching online. And thank you for those that have gathered in-house. Thank you for those that are visiting with us today. It's just a privilege and an honor for you to uh, spend some of this time with us today. And be rest, rest assured that God is trustworthy. And the thing that he has begun in you, you may not recognize that he started anything, but God is always out for, uh, to engage with us, to have a relationship with us. Thank you, Father. You'll bless these folks and they're going out, they're coming in and they're rising up and sitting down. I ask, Father, that they would do what Jesus said. Don't worry about tomorrow for you are trustworthy. Thank you. God bless you.